Today, we will embark on a fascinating journey through time to examine the long path that humanity has traversed from ancient Australopithecines to modern humans. This captivating story unfolds how we, Homo sapiens, faced the challenges of nature, evolved in societies, and formed incredible civilizations. Since time immemorial, our species has evolved, adapting to various conditions and changes in the surrounding world. From primitive hunters and gatherers to city builders and space explorers, each stage of our history has left its mark, shaping us into who we are today. Let's dive together into this gripping story of how the processes of evolution shaped our modern society and what our ancestors looked like in the past. Get ready to learn about the difficulties humanity overcame and what allowed our species to survive. This is the Space Progress Channel, and we are beginning to looking in the past that has made us who we are today. One million years before us. Compared to the average human lifespan, a million years is almost unimaginable. However, in the context of the Earth's existence, it is not significant. If we imagine our planet lived only one day, instead of four and a half billion years, then one million years would be less than 20 seconds in that day. Therefore, our planet a million years ago was almost indistinguishable from modern Earth in terms of global changes. Continents were already separated, dinosaurs were forgotten, and a new wave of beings had arrived, eventually evolving into present-day humans. Nevertheless, there were still minor differences, the most significant being the absence of humans. A million years ago, during the Pleistocene epoch, the planet experienced another global cooling. The main differences from our time are associated with this period. Without specialized calculations and instruments, it would be impossible to estimate how continents were shifted from their current positions. To the naked eye from space, they would appear in the same places as they are now. However, since the climate was significantly colder, changes in geology, as well as in the plant and animal world, would be noticeable. As the ice caps were much larger and glaciation extended far from the poles, the absence of certain water bodies and islands would be apparent, as well as the presence of land bridges between some territories. The most noticeable and important land bridge was undoubtedly the path connecting Asia and North America. At the location of the present-day Bering Strait, there was a land bridge that, according to scientists, allowed humans and some animal species to populate first North and then South America. The formation of land bridges was caused by the accumulation of a large amount of ice on the poles. According to scientists' estimates, the global climate was from 5 to 10 degrees colder on average, and the sea level was more than 100 meters lower. Consequently, on the world map due to the Ice Age, there were no objects like the Baltic Sea and the Great Lakes. Moreover, in the territory of the modern United States, there existed a different array of large freshwater lakes in the western part of the continent. The retreat of the glacier led to the disappearance of these water bodies and the emergence of five connected lakes on the border of the United States and Canada. Due to the low level of the world ocean, dust storms frequently occurred on the planet's surface. Coniferous trees dominated the Earth's vegetation. Oaks and beaches, contemporary deciduous species, already existed. However, the land, especially away from the equator, was covered not with forests, but with tundras and steppes. The animal world was dominated by representatives of the so-called mammoth fauna. Besides mammoths themselves, there were various hoofed animals. Among predators, notable ones include the famous saber-toothed tigers, cave lions and bears. People of the modern type, or even Cro-Magnons, did not exist at that time, but the ancestors of humans, originating in Africa, were already beginning their journey to populate the entire planet and establish their dominance. However, at that time, they did not stand out much among other animals. But thanks to the ability to adapt to rapidly changing living conditions, some of them were able to achieve certain success. In particular, these species were able to migrate to Asia and Europe via a land bridge. 
Among the early hominids known to science, several species stand out that could be our ancestors or evolved in parallel under conditions of serious competition. One of them was Homo habilis, or the handyman. He is considered the first representative of the Homo genus, appearing on the African continent about two million years ago. By the described period, Homo habilis had mastered many skills, indicating its significant intellectual abilities. The first roughly processed stone tools, Oldo and culture tools, were repeatedly found together with the remains of this creature. Presumably, Homo habilis crossed the invisible boundary that separated the Homo genus from all other biological beings. He took the first step towards subjugating nature. The tools made by Homo habilis were mostly made of quartz, but quartz was not found in the locations of these people. They brought it from distances ranging from 3 to 15 kilometers. Habilis obtained food through both gathering and hunting. The name Homo habilis was given because it was the earliest human to use tools of its own making. The height of these hominids was about 160 centimeters. They walked on two legs and the big toe was no longer opposable. The teeth of Homo habilis were smaller than those of humanoid apes and comparable in size to the teeth of modern humans. An important characteristic of these primitive humans was the change in the structure of the larynx. Formations responsible for speech centers were found, indicating that Homo habilis could communicate with each other using vocalizations. Unlike Homo habilis, who lived only in Africa, the remains of Homo erectus, or the upright man, were found beyond this continent. It seems that the ancestor of modern humans, who lived in the period from 1,850,000 to 400,000 years ago, initiated the spread of humanity across Asia and Europe. Erectus had a sufficiently large brain, not much smaller than that of modern humans. They also had a very similar skeletal structure. In the development of their skills, this species far surpassed many of their contemporaries. Homo erectus knew how to use fire and build primitive shelters. Also, their tools for hunting and fishing were more advanced than those of Homo habilis who lived earlier. The main activity of Homo erectus was a constant search for food. In addition to gathering roots, berries and other plant products which were insufficient for their sustenance, they periodically hunted various animals, often small but sometimes large. The danger that awaited Homo erectus at every step forced them to unite in large, stable family collectives, to which the concept of primitive herd or primal community has been established in historical literature. Erectus lived in small groups. Judging by the spaciousness of the studied dwellings, several generations of a large family coexisted in one room for an extended period. The formation of primal communities facilitated the hunting of large animals, in addition to which Homo erectus could engage in fishing, often catching fish with their bare hands. There is an opinion that they began to master the production of clothing and the preservation of food. According to anthropological specialists, clashes occurred in the society of Homo erectus, often leading to the death of certain members of the community. During times of famine, cannibalism was reportedly a common practice, as evidenced by traces of stone tools found on the skulls of Homo erectus individuals in China used for cutting meat from the facial region. In order to peacefully coexist in such a primitive society, considerable efforts were needed to restrain primitive instincts. For this purpose, certain accepted norms of behavior were developed and leaders emerged to control compliance with these norms. Scientists later distinguished several subspecies of Homo erectus that inhabited different parts of the planet. In Europe, there was the so-called Heidelberg Man. In the islands of the Pacific Ocean in modern Southeast Asia, there were Pithecanthropus or Javanthropus. In the territory of China, there were Sinanthropus. It is believed that Pithecanthropus turned out to be an evolutionary dead end and had no influence on the development of Homo sapiens. Their descendants were isolated on islands and gradually degenerated. Of all the human species that lived a million years ago, Heidelberg Mann is of primary interest to science. In terms of height and brain size, he was practically indistinguishable from modern humans. 
there is an opinion that this species is the common ancestor of Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons. However, Heidelberg man externally resembled Neanderthals more than us. Although the structure of the dental arch of Heidelberg man is almost identical to ours, like other ancient human species, they originated in Africa, but part of them migrated to Europe. Perhaps these populations had no contact with each other for a long time, developing in isolation. It is known that this species used fire and created quite advanced tools and weapons. They also cared for their fellow beings. Perhaps they had rudimentary religion and art. In general, living conditions on Earth a million years ago were quite comparable to modern times. The hominids living at that time already closely resembled humans. And before the appearance of the first Cro-Magnons, who were already 100% modern humans, only one small evolutionary step remained. 500,000 years before us. 500,000 years ago, our planet was experiencing another ice age. The continents were already in familiar positions, but the climate and nature were significantly different from our time. Despite such harsh conditions, the ancestors of modern humans continued to explore new spaces for living. This was the heyday of a human species known as Neanderthals. Nothing foreshadowed that they would disappear under the pressure of a more adapted and developed competitor in a few hundred thousand years. From 750,000 to 500,000 years ago, there was a definitive separation of the steppe mammoth from the southern mammoth, and it began to spread across Europe, Asia, and North America. Huge herds of large herbivores, such as the woolly rhinoceros, bison, various species of horses and deer, migrated across the tundra or steppes. Predators were represented by a large number of cat species, as well as wolves and bears. Simultaneously with mammoths, the ancestors of humans, commonly referred to as Neanderthals, emerged from Africa. It is believed that they appeared approximately 600,000 years ago, following the periodic retreat of glaciers. Their population spread farther north and east. Until recently, it was thought that they were an evolutionary dead end, and only Cro-Magnons, who appeared about 40,000 years ago, could be our ancestors. However, with the ability to conduct genetic studies, it was revealed that the DNA of many modern human populations contains Neanderthal genes alongside genes from other ancestors. Physically, Neanderthals were more adapted to the harsh living conditions on Earth during that period. However, they lagged behind in technological and cultural development, leading them to lose the race for survival. Nevertheless, their way of life, culture, and other characteristics are of great interest for scientific study. Their average height was about 165 centimeters. They had a heavy skeleton, and their muscle mass was approximately 30% higher than the muscle mass of an average modern human. Neanderthals had low, sloping foreheads, large cheekbones, and strong jaw muscles. Their noses were broad, designed to warm the inhaled air. Prominent features of their appearance included large brow ridges and a small chin. Neanderthal necks were robust and short. The structure of their vocal apparatus indicates the ability to produce articulate sounds, suggesting that Neanderthals could communicate with each other. There is also an opinion that they lacked facial hair, but this hypothesis has not been confirmed yet. The average lifespan of Neanderthals was short, averaging around 23 years. Scientists recently expressed an interesting opinion about the way Neanderthals moved. They believed that since these beings had shorter and more robust limbs, their steps were shorter than those of Cro-Magnons. As a result, Neanderthals had to expend more energy on walking and other activities with their hands and feet. Neanderthals obtained food through hunting and gathering. Their diet included products such as meat, nuts, and roots. DNA studies of these ancestors of modern humans showed that in adulthood, the gene responsible for lactose digestion was blocked, meaning they could only consume milk in early childhood. There is a belief that adults began drinking milk from various animals only with the advent of dairy farming. Before that, milk was almost a poison for an adult human. Most likely, Neanderthals lived in small family communities of up to 30 individuals. 
they actively used fire for cooking, pottery firing, and crafting various tools. Bones of not only herbivores, but also predators like cave hyenas, lions, and bears are often found near Neanderthal remains. This indicates that the contemporaries of the Mysterian era had to compete with these predators for shelter. Remains of large animals such as the primitive bison, musk ox, woolly rhinoceros, or mammoth suggest that the life of Neanderthals was closely connected to intensive hunting, possibly involving herding. They preferred hunting the largest herbivores, mammoths, woolly rhinoceroses. The presence of fractures, including improperly healed ones, on the preserved remains of Neanderthals indicates that they had to engage in close combat with the animals, resulting in multiple wounds and injuries. Contrary to popular belief, they did not use caves as dwellings. Archaeological findings indicate that their camps were more often located in the steppe along migratory routes near caves. They could arrange their dwellings using hides, wood, and bones. Neanderthals might enter caves only briefly in search of shelter or to perform ritual or cultural activities. For example, they may have used caves for burying their kin who died. A large number of cave burials have been found in Europe and the Middle East. There is practically no reliable information about Neanderthal culture. For a while, they were credited with inventing the first musical instrument when a bone flute with four holes was discovered during excavations. However, some believe that the holes could be the result of hyena teeth. While it is unknown whether a specific Neanderthal musician played sounds on such a bone without considering the nature of these holes, other signs of Neanderthals making musical instruments have not been found. Primitive wooden spears and clubs were used as weapons for hunting and warfare. Neanderthals did not possess projectile weapons like bows or slings. Gathering roots was done using special digging knives. Simple drills were used to make ornaments with teeth and claws of animals or shells commonly serving as decorations. There is no conclusive evidence of painting or sculpture among Neanderthals. Presumed art objects or any evidence of a special culture have often turned out to be attempts to fit the question into an answer. However, it is reliably proven that they had concepts of medicine and care for their kin. Many preserved skeletons show signs of well-executed treatment of fractures and other injuries. It is also known that among them lived elderly and disabled individuals, possibly assigned to lighter tasks. Therefore, Neanderthals had all the prerequisites for developing society to a higher level. Still, the harsh laws of evolution prevented them from advancing to the next stage. Perhaps the history of humanity would have taken a completely different path if these beings, rather than our direct ancestors, had won the survival race. 40,000 years before us. In the last 40,000 years, the human structure has hardly changed. Despite the vast differences in technological, scientific, and cultural development, it can be said that our species had already formed in its modern state. However, some scientists argue that there are certain differences between us and our ancestors. Also, the further back in time these people are, the more Neanderthal-like traits are present in their genotype. Later, other species preceding modern humans began to evolve. These were the Cro-Magnons. The term Cro-Magnon comes from the name of the French cave Cro-Magnon, where the first remains of this human species were discovered in 1868. Researchers found several male and female skeletons of varying preservation, along with tools and other items. Now, in the scientific community, the term Cro-Magnon, in a narrow sense, can refer to people found in this cave or living on the European continent between 40,000 and 10,000 years ago, as well as to the entire population of the Earth during the Upper Paleolithic period. But when we say that Cro-Magnons resembled modern humans, it's worth noting that inhabitants from different corners of our planet have a tremendous number of differences. So how did Cro-Magnons actually look? And which race or nationality of people is more similar to our common ancestors? In some early reconstructions, Cro-Magnon is depicted as an exact copy of a modern European, with light hair, a narrow straight nose, and a relatively slim figure. 
However, modern analysis methods provide accurate insights that these ancient people, for the most part, were dark-skinned or even black, with dark hair and eyes. The presence of light eyes among Cro-Magnons was a significant exception. There is an opinion that the indigenous people of Australia and the Pacific Islands have preserved almost entirely the appearance inherited from their ancestors from the distant Paleolithic era, and to a large extent, this is true. Tens of thousands of years ago, the population of Europe consisted of people with a more massive figure than ours, with flattened faces and more protruding chins. However, the Cro-Magnon nose was not as flat and wide as that of Australian Aborigines or African residents. Their jaws also protruded much less. These features were acquired much later during the process of global migration. The most interesting aspect is that the external differences among people from the Upper Paleolithic era, whose remains were found in various locations, were more diverse than the differences among all people currently inhabiting the Earth. Scientists explain this by the fact that people lived in small groups of several dozen individuals. Most of them were relatives. Therefore, each such small group had its distinct external characteristics. Thus, one can conclude that people who lived in Europe approximately 20 to 30,000 years ago had slight differences from modern Europeans and at the same time differed significantly from each other. Common features of all Cro-Magnons, making them dissimilar to modern humans, include a larger and more massive skull with prominent brow ridges, a forward projecting face with a large forehead and broad cheekbones. Their height could reach 190 centimeters and their limbs were elongated. Such a body type is currently typical for inhabitants of tropical regions on Earth. There is an opinion that this body structure facilitated faster movement and helped in hunting. Also, characteristic of Cro-Magnon people were angular eye sockets and a narrow, forward-projecting nose. One of the most significant features of this human species was a large brain. According to some data, its volume could reach 1,800 cubic centimeters. On average, it was about 1,500 cubic centimeters. This is even slightly larger than that of modern humans. The average brain volume of a contemporary human is around 1,300 cubic centimeters. Cro-Magnons were carriers of various cultures from the Upper Paleolithic and Mesolithic eras. Subsequently, their habitats experienced migratory flows of other representatives of Homo sapiens, for example, linear pottery culture. These people crafted tools not only from stone, but also from horn and bone. On the walls of their caves, they left drawings depicting humans, animals, and hunting scenes. Cro-Magnons created various ornaments. The Cro-Magnon skull differed with thick walls and a pronounced occiput. With high probability, these traits were inherited from Neanderthals, who undoubtedly were their ancestors. Different components of Neanderthal DNA are present in many found remains worldwide. For example, in the Sunghir burial site near the city of Vladimir, a skeleton of a man about 180 centimeters tall was discovered with broader shoulders than others. It is believed that this giant had a significant amount of Neanderthal DNA. But for the most part, Cro-Magnons were characterized by a dry and tanned complexion. At the same time, they were quite muscular, with long legs and a short torso. The earliest findings of remains with such characteristics date back to the period between 100,000 and 200,000 years ago. They were discovered in Africa and a bit later in the Middle East. From 40,000 to 50,000 years ago, these people inhabited Europe, actively displacing Neanderthals to less suitable areas for living. Just over 10,000 years ago, Cro-Magnons began to populate the American continents, crossing the Bering Strait via the land bridge that had formed. From all that has been said, it can be concluded that Cro-Magnons, who lived from 10,000 to 40,000 years ago, were very similar to us. However, among the ancient people themselves, there were numerous external differences. Despite the indisputable fact that our origin traces back to Cro-Magnons, scientists lean towards the belief that representatives of different races and nations originated from different groups of these Cro-Magnons. The latest findings of purely Cro-Magnon type remains date back to approximately 9,000 years ago. 
After this, various populations transitioning to a settled way of life and the advent of Neolithic agriculture began acquiring their own distinct external characteristics different from others. This variability, albeit to a lesser extent, is also observed in populations that remained exclusively hunters and gatherers for a long time. Although the common features that distinguished Cro-Magnon people from our other ancestors have more or less been preserved in all modern humans, but in cultural and technical terms, Cro-Magnons lagged significantly behind modern humans. In terms of intelligence and creativity, they might have outperformed us. Starting their journey with simple spears and clubs, they managed to invent and master not only the spear thrower, but also the bow. They also created unique cave paintings, developed burial and magical rituals. They had their own concept of medicine and possibly religion. It is believed that cave paintings in the caves of the European Alps, the Ural Mountains, and other inhabited areas of people in the Upper Neolithic era had more of a religious magical meaning. These paintings depicted various animals, accompanied by symbols of arrows or spears. Scientists assume that these images were connected to hunting rituals or initiation rites for hunters. But the intricate carvings on knife handles and other tools, as well as decorations on clothing items, could potentially have had purely aesthetic meanings. Excavations of numerous ancient settlements have revealed a large number of figurines made of stone and bone. Among burial inventories, there are household items and weapons. Furthermore, Cro-Magnons were the first to domesticate wild animals. The first companion of ancient people was the domesticated wolf, from which all breeds of domestic dogs subsequently originated. Some scientists believe that this symbiosis significantly increased the efficiency of hunting and became a major reason for the successful development of this human species. It is precisely these qualities and achievements that made our ancestors the dominant species, allowing them to spread across the entire planet, eliminating or assimilating their natural competitors. As direct descendants of these ancient hunters and gatherers, modern inhabitants of Earth can overcome all future natural catastrophes and remain the planet's masters for many thousands of years. But for this to happen, they must draw the right lessons from the history of their development and direct their inherited intelligence and adaptability toward the right path. Emerge of Homo sapiens Thanks to complex and lengthy evolutionary processes within the Homo species, the most advanced among them emerged, Homo sapiens or the thinking human. When comparing the thinking human with its predecessors, it can be said that externally it didn't differ significantly. It became slightly taller than its ancestors, approximately by seven centimeters. It still walked on two limbs. However, its facial features underwent considerable changes. Due to the more favorable life conditions, a powerful forehead and brow ridge were no longer necessary. The nose became smaller and the cheekbones less pronounced. In contrast to ancient ancestors such as Neanderthals, we have a lighter and more slender body structure, which may be associated with changes in lifestyle, including the transition to agriculture and a more active way of life. The main difference compared to previous species was its intelligence. This is evident from the name of this species. Primarily, this pertains to its social organization. In the past, humans mostly lived in small groups of hunters and gatherers. The thinking human realized that to live in better conditions, hierarchical structures should be created. The first settlements began to develop, where there was a clear distinction between those in power and those who submitted to that power. Such a structure allowed an entire tribe to pursue greater goals than just hunting and cooking. The first states began to emerge, with their own laws and rules regulating relationships among people in a settlement. The development of communities influenced the emergence of barter relationships. Primitive trade began, where some exchanged meat for plants. Later, the first forms of currency appeared, and trade became even more active. Technological progress is also one of the main features of the thinking human. Early human species already knew how to create tools to facilitate hunting or agricultural activities. 
However, the thinking humans surpassed them, creating an incredibly large number of various inventions from the wheel to the computer. This led to a significant increase in knowledge and an improvement in life. Means of communication, such as letters, emerged, contributing to the enrichment of interpersonal relationships. One of the main distinctions of the thinking human is its way of life. Compared to previous species, we live in incredible comfort. We no longer need to seek shelter from rain in caves as we have homes. There's no need to kindle fire through friction as we have gas. Thus, if humans were once entirely dependent on nature and its cycles, we now have greater control over the environment and have learned to exploit the gifts of nature to our advantage. Modern humans lead a more comfortable life, have access to education, medical care, and numerous other opportunities. Conclusion In general, modern humans represent the product of a long evolutionary path marked by technological and cultural progress which significantly sets them apart from their predecessors. As a species, humans have come a long way over millions of years. We have developed to the point where you are now watching this video, sitting at home, simply by pressing a button on your device. It's amazing how, in such a short period for our planet, we have progressed so much. What will happen next with our species is an open question. Unfortunately, at this point, we cannot look ahead in history. Perhaps in the future, humans will create a time machine and travel to the future or the past. And if you want to go back in time, you don't have to wait for the creation of a time machine. You can simply watch our previous videos and learn how dinosaurs evolved over more than 200 million years. Just think about how they evolved over such a long period, considering that it took humans only 1 million years. This was the Space Progress Channel. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Until next time.